Greetings and welcome to my channel. I am Matthew. I uh, will be doing another tutorial and today I will be talking about the different organ stops, special functions on the organ and basic registration. Before we know about the stops we need to know the aspects about an organ. An organ usually has one keyboard, sometimes two or more. These are called the manuals and a pedal board which the feet will play. Also that each compartment, each manual and the pedal board have their own sets of pipes. In a standard two manual instrument, the primary manual is at the bottom, known as the grate, and the secondary manual is on top, known as the swell. If the organ has a choir manual or a positive, also known as a rook positive, it will sit below the grate. Additional manuals such as the solo and the echo will be placed above the swell. Additional manuals get their name from their purpose and their function. Some organ builders may use a different layout if they wish to do so. In the French tradition, the positive will sit in the middle. The main manual the grate will sit at the bottom, positive in the middle, and the swell on top. Of course, there are different names for the different manuals in French terms, but I will not be covering that today. The different stops can be formed in tablets, rockers, or draw stops. They are either situated on top of the manuals or beside the manuals. They are also grouped according to which manual they belong to. The stops control the different sounds for each manual. There are stop names and there are numbers. What you have to remember now is that the lower the number, the higher the pitch, and the bigger the number, the lower the pitch. In addition to the stops, we have Couplers. Couplers enable the organist to play two or more manuals simultaneously on one manual. Also, we can couple our manuals to our pedals. We also have octave couplers and sub-octave couplers, but these are not very common, especially on larger organs. Another stop, which does not have its own set of pipes, is the tremolo. The tremolo affects the air supply, which causes a vibrato effect. This is an oboe. And an oboe with a tremolo. Tremolos are used for a solo melody only. I personally never use it. I dislike a tremolo, unfortunately. Sorry, not sorry. We also have swell and expression shoes above the pedal board. These regulate the volume of certain manuals secondary manuals in particular for expression purposes. Secondary manuals usually only the swell but the choir may also be under expression. Alongside the swell pedals we also have a crescendo pedal or a roll sweller. This activate stops from the softest to the loudest automatically. We also have preset pistons. They are usually underneath each manual and also above the pedal board on either side. These are set 
according to the organist, usually from the softest to the loudest. Some pistons may also have the reversible grate to pedal. On French organs, they have levers that are the couplers, the ventrals and the tremolo for the expression manual. We also sometimes have next and previous buttons. These are part of the sequencer. An organist will program the sequencer according to his repertoire that he will be performing. That he will be able to only press the next button instead of remembering which piston does what. I have a next and a previous button that I built into my home jobby and I use that for a sequencer. I program the stops according to the repertoire that I am practicing and it is much easier than remembering which button and to reach over and grab a few stops if I need to. In large organs that have a solo manual that will be a fourth manual above the swell it is often floating that means that the stops do not have a manual of their own that manual has to be coupled to an available manual to be playable sometimes the solo stops are part of the choir manual the organist has to then remember which stops are within the choir box and which stops are not for expression purposes. Now that you know the basic layout and functions of the organ, I will now speak about the different stop families. Organ stops are grouped into categories known as classification. There are four basic classifications. We start with the flues. The flues are pipes that have lips similar to a recorder. This is my tenor recorder. I have the alto and soprano. The bass is packed away. As that lip of the recorder where the sound comes out, that is similar in effect of producing sound. These are called flues. That's why they are called flue pipes. The first classification that I will discuss is the principles. The principles are the most distinctive sound of the organ and generally louder than the other flues. They tend to have an air sound to them. This is an eight foot principle. Nice warm sound to them. Stops that ha are part of the principal family, their names might include diapason, principal, octave, twelfth, fifteenth, prestant, montre, etc. The next classification is the flutes. Instead of having a air sound like the principles, they have an oo sound. Names will include flute, bordon, gedacht, claribel, ruhr, stopped, etc. This is a ruhr flute. In English, also known as the chimney flute, because it has a little chimney on it. The next classification are the strings. The strings are similar to the principle, but softer and thinner. Instead of producing an a sound it produces E. This is an eight foot gamba.
compared to the 8 foot principle. The principle is warmer than the strings. Names of strings might include Celestial, Gamba, Viola, etc. Part of the string family are Celestes. Celestes are tuned slightly higher and used with its string partner, if you can call it that, to create a wavy effect on the sample organ that I have, I have a viola on my swell. I don't know if you can pick up that the Vox Celeste, some people pronounce it Voix Celeste, excuse my language, I'm not sure how to pronounce them. Um, is tuned slightly higher when combined it gives that wavy effect next in the category is the reeds but before I get to the reeds I would like to mention two stops that are somewhat confusing first is the dulcihana not to be confused with a dulce horn. A dulce horn is a reed, an extremely nasal reed, if I should put it like that. The dulce horn is usually the softest stop on the instrument if the instrument has one. My sample set, unfortunately, does not have such a stop. It is classified as a diminutive diapason. That means it's part of the principal family, but it gets used as a string. It is incredibly soft. It is sometimes classified as a string for its use and purpose, but it is actually part of the principal family, but on a softer scale. A diminutive scale as they call it the next stop is a gemshorn the gemshorn is a hybrid stop that means it forms part of two classes it is a string and flute hybrid but softer than a principal and a little bit more flutier I think this is a game song. I could be wrong. I am not sure. Sometimes a four foot game song is used instead of a four foot principal on a secondary manual. The next category is the reeds. The reeds are called reeds because they have brass reeds inside a boot and have resonators. Resonators influence the timbre. Timbre is the distinctive sound one instrument has to another. This is an eight foot trompeta. It's a trumpet. It is very potent. The reeds usually imitate orchestral instruments such as trumpets, horns, oboes, clarinets, and also free reed instruments such as regals. Not technically classified as an organ stop, but I think it deserves an honorable mention. Those are percussion stops. Lovingly referred to as the toy or the gadget department of an organ. These are generally imitations of orchestral percussion. For example, chimes, also known as a 
klokkenspel or a glockenspiel have mechanical beaters which physically beat metal bars or tubes. Ranges are sometimes limited to approximately three octaves only. Now to get to the numbers within the stop names. Eight foot is the standard pitch on the manuals. Stops with eight foot will sound the same pitch as on a piano or other concert pitch instruments. Concert pitch instruments, instruments that do not transpose, if you're aware of transposition. The lowest C of a manual of a standard 8 foot diapason is roughly 8 foot from the flue to the top of the pipe where the tuning bush or a tuning slit will be. That is roughly 2.5 meters in metric terms. We generally refer to the 8 foot pitch class. This is the fundamental note of the harmonic series. Other pitch classes include the 16 foot pitch class which sounds an octave lower as well as the 32 foot pitch class which sounds two octaves lower. Whole numbers indicate different octaves. Any of these may be used independently, such as a four foot on its own. Numbers with fractions are what we call mutations. These indicate harmonics other than octaves. These serve the purpose of providing color and to strengthen the harmonics of the fundamental note. Mutations form part of certain pitch classes and are usually softer than the fundamental note and octaves of the pitch classes they belong to. Besides the 8 foot diapason, the difference in feet do not necessarily refer to the approximate length of the lowest pipe of each stop, but rather at which octave a specific stop will speak. The volume inside the pipe is what is important. Open flutes are wider and shorter. They have wider lips, flues. Stopped pipes, such as a bordon, is twice as deep as what it is long. They are usually half the length when compared to an open pipe of the same pitch. Strings on the other hand are longer and thinner to tr produce a thinner sound. An example, the harmonic flute is twice its length. It has a hole in the middle of the pipe to produce an harmonic. It is the same as a recorder when you pinch it with your thumb. Not pinched, the normal note. And then pinched, we're going to get the octave above it. That's the same effect with the harmonic flute. The length and the shape of resonators on reeds mostly influence the timbre of the stop. They have somewhat but minimal impact on the pitch. If we use the 8 foot pitch glass, we are able to arrive at the most common number values found on organ stops. These indicate the harmonics of the fundamental 8 foot. If you take an 8 foot and divide it by 2, we will arrive at 4 foot. 4 foot then sounds an octave higher. A stop is sometimes called an octave of a 4 foot. This is the 4 foot. 
and then next if we take an 8 foot divided by 3 we get 2 and 2 thirds of a foot. This sounds an octave and a perfect fifth higher, sometimes called the twelfth or the quinta on Dutch organs called a three foot. So an eight foot, an octave and a fifth higher. Next, if you take an eight foot divided by four, we will arrive at two foot. Two foot sounds two octaves higher. The stop can be called a fifteenth or a super octave. The eight foot, two octaves higher. And now the two foot. If we take eight foot and divide it by five, we'll get one and three fifths of a foot. This will sound two octaves and a major third higher. This stop is often called the tiers. The eight foot, two octaves and a major third higher. The tiers. Next, if we take an eight foot divided by six, we'll get one and one third. This sounds two octaves and a perfect fifth higher. The stop is often called a larigot. I'll play it down here for ease of reference because I'm running out of space. An eight foot, two octaves and a fifth higher. And that one. If you take 8 foot and divide it by 7, we get 1 and a 7th. Now this is not common on many organs. This sounds 2 octaves and a minor 7th higher. It is actually called the 21st or the septime or septem. That means 21st. I don't have such a stop. It's the first time I see such a thing. If you take an 8 and divide it by 8, we get 1 foot. 1 foot is not a mutation, but it is not found very often. This sounds 3 octaves higher. I do not have a one foot, so it's going to sound two octaves plus three. I'm using the two foot. It's going to sound very high. That is the most common tones of the eight foot pitch class. If you take eight foot multiplied by two, we get 16 foot. 16 foot sounds one octave lower. This is the 8 foot. I'll play it an octave lower. This is the 16 foot principle. Sounds an octave lower. And then we have the 32 foot, which is double 16. I don't have a 32 foot. You won't really find that on the manuals. I'll just play it on the pedals and I'll use the trumpets so that you could hear it clearer. The flu 32 foot, you cannot hear it over your computer or your cell phone speakers. An 8 foot trompeta. <laughs> then we have the 16 foot posaune, or in English, trombone. Then we have the 32 foot contra posaune. Then 
doesn't sound really nice on its own, but in combination, it really gives an impact. If you take the 16 foot pitch class divided by three, we get five and one third. This sounds a perfect fifth higher or an octave and a perfect fifth higher from a 16 foot rank. If you take the 32 foot pitch class and divide that by three, we will get 10 and two thirds, also known as a gross quinta. This sounds a perfect fifth lower or an octave and a perfect fifth higher from 32 foot. It is used within a resultant 32 foot. A resultant doesn't have a true length of 32 feet. We have 16 foot plus the 10 and 2 thirds. Because of the low register and if we make the harmonic of the fifth very soft, it will create an effect of a 32 foot. An example will be this. My principal on the great 16 foot and then on the swell my 16 foot flute. And then on the swell I'll play a fifth higher on G major. And then you put that together, playing two different scales with one hand. I think, I think only organists can do that. I'm not sure if pianists are able to. I'll add the eight foot principle. As I said, it gives the effect of a 32-foot flue. A 32-foot cannot really be heard. It's more being felt than what you hear it. <laughs> 